Thank you. I'm going to sit down to give this, uh, to do this intro. Um, thank you, Sachiko, uh, for your comments. Um, I think this year we're very keen to get the summit as interactive as possible and also rather than rest on our laurels and say it's all great, actually is to challenge some of the things we've said. So in this uh, session, let's just get the right one up. Um, we uh, want to really look at the whole issue of openness in, in the sector. Um, and the sort of the catalyst that we decided to use was an, actually an, an, a blog article, article um, by Andrew DeMeo of Gartner. And many of you perhaps have seen that, and I'll, I'll go through some of the comments from Andrea in a moment. But in this session, and I think it is hopefully is going to reflect, you know, why we chose the overall title for the summit. Um, and if you, you know, you, um, we've got I think just about all the buzzwords in at the moment, which is always good. So you've got growth in there, you've got collaboration in there, you've got open in there, you've got innovation in there, and what's even better, you put open and innovation together. So we've got open innovation. Um, <laughs> So a cynic say, yeah, okay, it's just about that. But actually, we try to do quite a lot more thinking about that because we're an organization that, as Sachiko said, really does believe in the whole concept of openness, looking at it in the concept in the public sector market. Um, and we really, I think the challenge we have to do is say, well, it's all very well, but let's prove it. Um, so just to start off with, um, I've got a couple of quotes here from... Uh, Henry Chesbra, which many of you know is the person that is uh, put up and has put and published a number of books around open innovation, um, and the one that I particularly liked was open services in yeah, innovation as well. And there's a couple of things there. That, you know, they're nothing startling, but I think they do possibly just draw a few conclusions, um, both for Europe and the European Commission, uh, the European Union. But also the fact is that to be innovative, you really do need to think openly. And I think part of the, as he says there, part of it is to share the risks and rewards of innovation rather than just to hold it central. So a core to what Chesbra is saying is very much the concept of building a network, building partners, building people that collaborate together, but also know how you build your own value in there. Um, and one of the exemplars that he gives in his books, of course, is open source software uh, that we all know and love. Um, but nowhere do we find much discussion on the use of open innovation in the IT market or indeed uh, the use of open innovation within government. So part of the things that we thought today for our summit is we should start to explore that aspect. So if I could just come and, and then pick up what Andrew DeMeo said, um, is Andrew DeMeo in his blog put up a couple of... Uh, points, if I can just try and get my slides I can see them, because it's hard to look from behind otherwise. Um, he really, as I said, is acted as a catalyst for this debate. And the first uh, quote up there, I'm convinced he had Open Forum Europe in mind when he wrote it. So basically, you, you just, as long as you had Open in front of everything, it's all going to be all right and nobody's going to argue, argue with you. Um, and... But there's, a, there's another emphasis that comes out, they say there, is, is that if you start um, pushing for everything to be open by default and that citizen participation is an absolute priority. But what he then balanced that with was very much was saying that's all very well, but in government, as in many other organisations, there's huge financial pressures on at the moment, the whole issue about sustainability. And is this the right thing to make it stick in a very challenging environment? And one of the blogs he goes in there talks about the need to be selfish. So if you are in governments, um, you've really got to look after yourself. And just because your minister says this is the right thing to do, does this actually what is going to move the world? You know, are these the priorities? And I think what his challenge is is not to say that open is wrong, but at the minute, maybe this isn't the top priority in government. Um, so that's really where we wanted to pick up the debate, because if he's right, then why have we been worrying so much about the European interoperability framework? Because you don't need pan-European interoperability, do you? 
why do we have any government program within the European Commission where we can close that down as well? Because that's all about people working together. So unless there is actually a driver for collaboration, many of the things that we talk about in form of openness really are for the birds. You know, very nice and interesting, but is it necessary? Um, now, you might just gather I'm being a little bit devil's advocate with some of these comments. Um, but that's really what we wanted to, to pick up on um, in the panel this morning. So, you know, I'm really pleased that I've managed to persuade three individuals um, that I know well to pick up that debate. And I hope they're not all going to agree. Um, so, from starting from my side, uh, is, nearest to me is Jerry Fishenden. Uh, now, here's a first for a start because... Uh, Jerry, of course.